What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's time for week 8 of the Alpha Pokemon League. This is the final week of the regular season and we have our team builder for the Carolina Caterpies who are coached by Bandit Caterpie. Of course, if you do not feel like sitting through the home team builder, look in the description for a little annotation that'll jump you right to the battle. For those of you who want to stick around, these never take that long. So let's get right into it. We can see that Bandit Caterpie has Infernape, which is a Z user, Salamence, Galvantula, Registeel, Miltank, Gardevoir, Swampert, Megalopunny, Dewblade, Cryogonal, and Slurpuff. Uh, this is my first time battling Bandit Caterpie, but I was watching several of his battle replays and he was taking serious lies with Belly Drum Slurpuff. So we are taking this very, very carefully here because this is actually a pretty bad matchup. Like his access to sticky webs and a lot of my team being grounded, for example, not a great matchup. Uh, a lot of his bulky stuff is weak to fighting and I don't have a fighting type, like just things like that. Um, but that's okay because that is what prep is for. So we are bringing Arcanine with uh, the Fighting MZ for close combat Flare Blitz, Morning Sun, and Will-O-Wisp. Just enough speed there in order to outspeed a max speed Gardevoir. And then the rest just in HP and defend so that I can switch into Stealth Rocks one more time. Um, I went with close combat Flare Blitz because that hits his whole team for something. Uh, I won't be able to do much with something like Swamp Bird and if, you know, Salamence comes in, I can't do much to that, but I can burn it. So I have options here is the main thing. The other thing here is that I'm going to be using Intimidate a fair bit, and that'll soften things up for the rest of the team. Uh, fair warning, we have some unconventional sets this week. The next set is a little bit more normal. I have Scarfed Garchomp with Stealth Rock, Outrage, Dual Chop, and Earthquake. Dual Chop is just there in case I need to break a Sash and then KO something, or anything weird like that. Stealth Rock is just going to be good for this match generally because I think he's going to be switching around a good bit. And if he's going to get up his Sticky Web, for example, with Galvantula or get up his Stealth Rock with Miltank, I will get mine up too. And I can easily swap out into something else. Uh, Outrage is just nice because after Slurpuff goes down, if Registeel isn't around, then I can just spam Dragon Titan moves across his team. So, always good there. Um, next, we have Rowdy Rough Boys, also Choice Scarf. That's right, dual Scarfers this week. Uh, Dodrio Speed Tier is just too good to miss out on this week. Um, nothing on his team outspeeds it, and very possible that he would bring Scar Salamence or Infernape. And of course, Dodrio is not grounded, so if he does get up his Sticky Web, I will still have something speedy to abuse. I do have to be careful of the possible Ice Shard on the um, uh, Cryogonal. And of course, Mega Law Pony gets access to Fake Out and Quick Attack. But if I have a Choice Scarf, my Quick Attack will go first too, so that's nice. Um, and really, Brave Bird is just very spammable against this whole team. Bar his Steel types, and then those don't like getting hit by knockoff and having their item removed. I was going to go with Jump Kick, but I just didn't feel like it gave me a lot of utility in this match. And I really didn't want another move to, to risk missing, because every attack is going to be important this this battle for sure. So the first weird Pokemon we have, or weird set rather, is Weakness Policy Florges. Max HP, max defense in order to take on Infernape and Salamence to a lesser extent the Mega Law Punny and the Dual Blade. It can take a hit. And if any of them happen to be running their coverage moves, I'll take a hit. For example, Infernape's uh, Gunk Shot, for example. I'll take a hit, Weakness Policy will activate, and then I'll kill it in one hit back with Moonblast. So that's the idea there. Take a hit from something, then kill it right back. So the ability to remove threats is going to be very nice with Forges. I did go with Aromatherapy, Calm Mind, Moonblast, just because if I get the Weakness Policy activated and then I get a Calm Mind or two, then I can even I can even do decent damage to something like Registeel, so we have options. Serena is just a fully, specially defensive set this time with U-Turn and Rapid Spin. Rapid Spin is going to be really important if he gets up Sticky Webs. Even Stealth Rock are going to be ignoring this match because of Arcanine and Dodrio and my Illumis. Um... Yeah, I just don't want to deal with that. Uh, I did go specially defensive because with Assault Vest and Max Special Defense Investment, we can take hits from even a Life Orb Galvantula. The um, Cryogonal can't two-hit KO us with Ice Beam, even if it's offensive. 
Uh, it lets me take Swampert Scald a lot better, or Ice Beam from Swampert. Gardevoir can't do much unless it's running Psy Shock. So I just like that option better. Plus, Serena invites in Salamence and Dual Blade every single time it comes in. So, what better way to take advantage of that than to just U-turn out immediately? Granted, I'm, it may be a little tough to spin because of the U-turning out, but if the Dual Blade's alive, I'm not going to try to spin anyway because that's just a free swap in for it. So, might as well get some momentum off of that. And then the final member of the team is a set that I'm very proud of, is my Elamese. It has Rocky Helmet, Max HP, Max Defense, um, Encore, Thunder Wave, Charm, and Moonlight. This is there just for his physical attackers because he has a lot of them. And after a charm, for example, Illumise normally takes less than half from a lot of his physical attackers. Uh, on top of that, a lot of his physical attackers are using contact moves, so that's why I just for I decided to forego the offensive move on Illumise and just go with support. Because he doesn't have that many taunt users either, so. I can really just come in, lock something into its move with Encore, like a Mega Law Plenty locked into Fake Out, or a Dual Blade locked into Swords Dance, or a uh, Miltank locked into Stealth Rock, or same thing with um, Registeel. And then Charm, if he switch, if he has a lot of special attackers left, like if he just happens to bring like Guard of War and the Galvantula and the Cryogonal all on one team, then I'll have to play around that. But even then, those Pokemon don't like getting paralyzed outside of the Galvantula. And with Charm, that allows me to take hits from a variety of his Pokemon. If I'm for some reason allow Salamence to set up, for example, Charm will get priority, lowering that attack stat, and then I can get the priority Moonlight to get my health back. Uh, all while they're chipping away at their own health by attacking me. So that's the idea with Illumise. It's actually deceptively bulky because, um, for example, Mega Lopunny can't two hit KO it it's like a good roll in my favor to two hit KO unless it's adamant and then with the charm on top of that there's like a three or four hit KO so I am really proud of this LME set so thanks for watching the team builder let's get right into the battle alrighty so thank you so much for watching the team builder if you didn't the quick and dirty rundown of the team of course is Vitinium Z Arcanine with Willowis plus combat flare blitz and morning sun Choice Scarf Garchomp with Rocks, Choice Scarf Dodrio with Quick Attack and Knock Off and Return and Brave Bird, a defensive Florges with Weakness Policy, a specially defensive Serena with Assault Vest, specifically with U-Turn to catch momentum on Salamence or Dual Blade, and of course our crispy Illumise with Charm, Encore, Moonlight, and Thunder Wave with the Rocky Helmet, Max HP, Max Defense. We can see that Caterpie actually ended up bringing some Pokemon that I didn't expect. For example, no webs. Very nice. No Registeel. Also very, very nice. That actually is nice for two reasons. Number one, it'll be a lot easier to use my Z move on Arcanine in this matchup. And number two, I if I get locked into the right move on either of my Scarf Pokemon, I can kind of run a little train on him. Uh, especially, for example, no Surpuff, so I can just use Dragon type moves pretty easily. So that really eases prediction. For this matchup, though, uh, starting off with Garchomp, unless he starts off with Cryogonal, I get my rocks up immediately. And if he starts off with Cryogonal, I go immediately for Outrage. So uh, it's not it's not hard to click those those buttons there. So let's get into this battle. We see that he actually is going to lead with his Mill Tank, which probably just going to put up rocks complimentary exchange of rocks right at the beginning of the battle, which is fine. Uh, I do have Serena to get rid of those rocks, so that's interesting. He doesn't know that I'm Scarf yet either, so we're just going to swap out immediately into Serena and hope that he goes for Body Slam, and he actually does. We actually had to replay the first few turns because I was level 50 and he was level 100, and so I was shocked when Moltang KO'd my Serena. <laughs> I was like, how did he do that much damage? But he was at level 100. So expecting Dual Blade, we are going to go straight for U-Turn because that was the game plan. If he brought that or Salamence, go for U-Turns at first because that rapid spin is not going to get off anyway. And then we do go out into our Arcanine. The Intimidate is nice just because Dual Blade is a physical attacker. But of course, he can set up with Swords Dance. Here I just decided to go for Will-O-Wisp because I was worried that Salamence might try to come in. And I didn't have anything really good to hit it with. I am okay with hitting the Miltang with that too. That forces him to reveal 
Hillbell if he has it. It also negates his leftovers, which is nice. Uh, and here, Mill Tank is why I have the Z close combat. So we're going to go straight for that with the really cool new animation on Smogon. I do like that. And I get a critical hit there. If I got a medium roll on my uh, all out pummeling, I would have KO'd anyway. And that's only if he was max HP, max defense. So I don't think the crit mattered necessarily. And he's going to come in with his Infernape and fire right back with his own all out pummeling. I wanted to go out the floor just very, very badly there, but I was afraid he would go for the fire type move, predicting me to swap out. And so I lose Arcanine in exchange for the mill tank, which isn't bad, but I, Arcanine would have, could have done a lot more in this matchup. Uh, he doesn't know my Dodrio is Scarf, but I know that he's not Scarf since he uses Z move. So I was very close to clicking knockoff here in case the dual blade came in, but I figured if it did come in, that's okay. I can just go out into my Illumise. And if it didn't come in, I get to knock out the Infernape. So um, I do decide to go out to Garchomp before I go out to Illumise because I figured he would attack. And I wanted to see kind of what investment we were working with here. This is a fair chunk to Garchomp. And um, okay, that means my Illumise can definitely handle these hits. So I go out into Illumise now to save HP on my Garchomp. He does get a crit on the Shadow Claw, but we see even with the crit, Illumise can take those. And of course I have the priority Moonlight to get my HP back. And he goes for Shadow Sneak trying to pick me off of my Prankster. And especially since I'm not running a minus speed nature. That's going to keep me going a little faster than him. Here I was like, okay, he's probably going to try to set up. Because he sees that I have recovery. And so I went for Charm just to negate it. And he goes for Swords Dance right after. I go for Moonlight here expecting him to attack. And I do get that call right once again. This is nice that I'm faster with Prankster because otherwise I'd be risking flinches here and there. And expecting him to swap out trying to save the dual blade, I went for Thunder Wave right there, which... I mean, he could have brought it back in on the Stealth Rocks and not been KO'd and had Shadow Sneak. But, uh, we're just gonna go for a Charm here to make sure I can take any hit, no problem. And, um, he does end up going down. I really maybe should have gone for Moonlight right there. I'm out of range for any attack that Law Pony wants to go for. If it goes for Fake Out, the max it can do even with Adamant is 24%. So I'm fine. I calc it and everything so I can live any hit, but he gets a critical hit Fake Out. Which means my little Illumines does not get to do what I wanted it to do in this match. <sighs> Unfortunate. That is okay though, because he I know he's not faster than my Scarf Garchomp, and I'm okay with revealing Scarf Garchomp here. Because I don't make him think that Dodrio was in the Scarf. And since he has no Slurp Puff, I'm just going to go straight for it. And I also calc it just in case he happened to have Ice Shard on Cryogonal. I had a good shot at living it, and he does have Ice Shard on Cryogonal. Good prep. But I am out of range for that. I think he needed to have, like, Adamant Max Attack to KO me with Ice Shard. And Cryogonal probably not running that. So Cryogonal goes down, which is very nice. Inferno comes out, and I can't live the switch back in, so I'm just going to go for another Outrage. And I was expecting him to die to a Mock Punch, but he just drops. So that's not a situation I have to deal with. And unless Salamence is somehow magically faster than me, um, it's going to go down here too, because I happen to break through my confusion, and I get to hit the Salamence as well. So that's going to be a 4-0 victory there against the Carolina Caterpies. Thank you very much for the battle, sir. Um, but yeah, that game plan actually went just how I envisioned it. I didn't get a chance to use my Forges at all, which I really should have swapped in Forges on the Infernape. But you turning out with Serena to get into anything else on the dual blade is exactly what I wanted. I got to use the Z move from Arcanine on the mill tank. Exactly what I wanted. And having the dual scarfers there, I don't think there was a way that he could have won against the team that I brought with what he brought. Just because, say he did knock out Garchomp here, I have Scarf Dodrio. And then there's nothing that Lop Honey can do to knock out my Forges, for example, either. So I feel like I had that locked up in the end game there. But that being said, that was still a bear to prepare for. So very, very good drafting on his part. And that means that at the end of the regular season for season two of the Alpha Pokemon League, the Eternity City Enders are undefeated. I had uh, one forfeit against me just because someone dropped from the league. But 
not bad at all. I'm actually pretty pleased with everything, so it was really nice to get some good experience with some new Pokemon that I haven't really used before. So yeah, hopefully we'll go into playoffs here with even more momentum, and I can pull some wins there too. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next battle upload. Talk to you later.